first station is started in the year 1927 it started by the british in british people uh, as the central rice institute now it is uh, changed as regional agriculture station patambi and we are the central zone uh, of the university and under this we have six substations that is throughout in kerala that is in uh, thrissur we have three substations and in uh, chalakudi we have one station and one in uh, odakali near malappuram uh, we have and varakulam uh, that is pineapple rice station so a lot of stations in six stations are there and we are the main stations under the rice station and similarly one more station is there in the rice in kerala is the kutanad i think you know about the mean sea level is below the area so uh, that is the main centers we have uh, in, in that the scenario is different so coming to the in nutshell when i say the crop pest in rice means you say you have a different pest actually now you all if you any think about rice means you have a thinking about only stem borer and leaf holder i think everybody be knows but beside that now major many pest are emerging as a serious pest so uh, in our uh, initially uh, rice rice so we have in our kerala country we have two crops one is called the carrot season or the first crop season in manara because it is very important and second half is uh, ragi season or mundagan season so normally our uh, sowing in our rice uh, starts in the month of uh, june most of the farmers think but we people are not going to uh, plant in the devastation in the month of july we have four months period we have short duration may be duration and long duration crops we have so normally we see the uh, crop is the carrot season And second crop is the rabi season, which starts in the month of October, December, and extends by the month of March, February, uh, March. So in that, uh, I think we can start the power plant. Okay. So uh, now in the in the case of first crop season, uh, we have different pests, and uh, the pests we you know in our Kerala are very much so mostly by south west part. So we have the two summers that we have the first season. Till now we started our rain to start it. So in that we get see this very quickly. There are major pests we get see the different crop stages. Uh, different pest is present. So you know rice is a water loving crop. So when you see the water stagnation is a uh, water required is more for rice. And uh, particularly the nursery we see. Nursery you have about the thrips you heard about thrips. You know it's a uh, insect which is having a different type of mouth parts. And uh, when you see the thrips it is comes as i mentioned it comes in the nursery alone after 15 days after sowing it's a very serious pest and uh, in the uh, second mainly it is not present in the first crop but in the second crop it is a serious mainly when you see when there is a sh- uh, sunshine in between the rainfall there is some dry periods are there the pest become more more uh, uh, problematic in rice nursery and if you see uh, the in a powerpoint page hmm. so uh, if the thrips is a major crop problem in the first crop uh, if provided that there is no rainfall and during that period so when you see it start after the 15 days after sowing and uh, uh, the you know have you heard uh, seen the symptom of rice uh, thrips damage in the rice actually if you see wherever you see the attack of a thrips there will be inward rolling in the leaves will be in rolling even if you see in the chillies there will be uh, inward rolling in the margin of the leaves so when you see the thrips is you know is supposed to having a different type of mouth parts called rasping and sucking so they do the rasp the leaf tissue and suck the sap from the emerging uh, leaf t- surface and they suck the sap so if you see um, we have etl levels for almost all the pest in rice rice is the only crop where you have etl economic threshold for almost all the pest we say it is 25 thrips for 5 passes that means you have to take just you wet your hand and in the nursery what diagonal and Uh, just to sweep with your hand if you see the number of you have to count the number of thrips if it is exceeding 25 then you have to go for a chemical otherwise you know to go for chemical and normally we recommending is the flooding so when the thrips attack is in even in the uh, chillies also when you spray with water it will be this small insect microscopic insect like thrips and mites are washed away by spraying water so water spray is very good for uh, mind that is insect which are very small in nature so like that you can able to take, raise the water level and you wash out you can wash out the uh, insect population from the canopy that reduces the population maybe some 20 to 30, 30 to 40 percent population will be reduced then you can go for and you heard about already he was telling our murugan sir was telling 
we have a lot of varieties we have we have somewhat uh, field resistance so you cannot say it's complete resistance i have a field resistance uh, to the drips and similarly we research we have found out that application of vermi compost a drip of 750 gram per square meter it gave you know about pseudomonas now pseudomonas why you are applying for pseudomonas for rice it produces resistance to fungal pathogen as well as bacterial pathogen so similar case when you apply this vermi compost in the nursery it give the uh, sturdiness and growth and the plants become strong and sturdy the attack of the thrips will be minimum that's why we recommend the this one and normally neem based pesticides are mostly effective for leaf feeding pest for example the insect which is normally found on the superficies of the leaf which you know about the effect of neem it doesn't have a diet effect it's have indirect effects maybe anti feed and maybe oi potential deterrent or it may be influence the metabolic like that same thing so the rice by spraying the neem uh, 1% you can uh, to manage the population when the population is below the etl you can go for neem based sprays and if you go for very high you know the thiomethoxam actra we available in the name of actra it is available in 5 grams sachet it have so normally we go at the rate of 2 grams per 10 liters of water that means uh, with a packet of uh, actra you can play spray about nearly 25 liters of water for 5 grams in 25 liters of water next slide please So this is the major pest in nursery, and uh, even now, now thrips is been becoming now menace in Kerala also. Uh, not only in rice, but it's also mango. You are not Madhya Pradesh region. You are not about Madhya Pradesh. It's suggestion to Palakkad region, uh, where the farmers are producing mango, and this mango comes to the market first compared to all of the mangoes, even from Tamil Nadu. Actually, the flowering starts in the month of. in october november and the mango reaches the, the first mango will be reaching the uh, mango markets even it is exported in the month of uh, maybe if, uh, my, may, april may so in that thrips now becoming a major menace where their farmers are severe facing earlier when you were studying we, we don't know about thrips it was a major minor pest now it is becoming major pest in almost all the cropping system even mango the complete drooping of flowers is caused by the attack of thrips so this is the pest which i worked actually this is rice blue beetle you heard about this rice blue beetle actually you know about hispa anybody i think you people anybody have worked in uh, rice now this group anybody all are new to rice or this is uh, already i think in the course you have studied but in the practically you have anybody have experience no so sar was asking two people they are not come today i think so and if you see this is the rice blue beetle is called leptispia pygmia so this is the beetle which is present only in kerala because what happens so this particular paste beetle is a coleopteran paste which is comes from the family chrysomelidae so the same family of hispa so uh, when this due to this presence of paste this is uh, this one blue beetle we don't uh, have the presence of hispa we don't have that much bisa but other states they have the problem of hispa you know hispa you would have seen or not i think it's a black spiny beetle so that the feeding damage is also different from this both the species normally this uh, both the species feeds on the emerging leaves of the plant adult feeds uh, only the they make the only the scraping in the case of uh, hispa they make blister like spots they make by oil feeding but blue beetle makes a scraping of leaf beetle but the crabs are the very serious pest in this you can see this uh, second one the leaves are rolled you can see lot of these things are rolled so there is the attack there is confusion of the farmers whether it's a leaf folder or to attack of a blue beetle we don't know but in case of a leaf folder there will be webbing of leaves that be webbing means the adjacent leaves will be webbed together and uh, you can see when you remove the web you can see the larva feeding on the uh, folded leaves but in the case of hispa uh, this blue beetle only the emerging leaves are fed by this uh, crab and they fold the leaf and they fold the leaf and it, there won't be any uh, webbing of leaf you can see only the rolling inward rolling of the leaf of the emerging leaf and what i find out from our my studies we found out that it is attack both nursery as well as the early transplanted trees not the late stage of life after 20 25 days old seedlings it is affect the uh, main transplanted leaf and the nursery is seen and it is serious only in the first crop season not in the second crop it is not present only in the first crop season because of the continuous showers and humidity it helps in the favor multiplication of this beetle pest and what i mentioned what you like hispa it is 2 annuals per hill and if you see the dad sowing dad sowing um, if you do there will be reduction in damage rather than the transplanted one uh dark seed or rice are suppose less damage to blue beetle and we have the resistance varieties the same thing which is showing resistance to thrips and we also found out that 
wide spaced plants normally if you see blue bee bph and all close plants increases the damage but in the case of blue beetle wide spaced plants are more attacked by the blue beetle than the closed ones so when the hills are very isolated means the damage will be more in the case of blue beetle so wide spaced are more attacked than the closed plants and if you see the uh, we, we for blue beetle you can go for any counter insect set even the neem will do uh just you spray the neem because it's a feed only on the superficially on the foliage so you can go for neem for early stage when the population is very high you can go for any contact bus like our quinal foss or acifit anything you can go so coming to the next next slide please so this is the one of the serious pests in our system place it's called rice gall midge i think you have it's a dipteran actually it's resemble like a mosquito if you see this is this is a fly actually uh, the females the they are red in color both the male and the female are red in color the female are larger than the males they have very good swollen abdomen and you know uh, the damage is called uh, you would have studied about anacomban or silver shoot that means the entire leaf will come like a onion shoot like a attack of a uh, onion the leaves will be emerging as a this you can see the damage here you can see the plants you can see all like tube like structure so this is the damage by the fly what what happen the fly will attack mostly in the month of late transplant in the first crop season in the first transplant year season when you go for late transplanting the attack will be sure for example when so instead of going for june if you are going for july means the damage will be very higher when you do for early early transplanting will escape the attack and similar in the crabby season second crop season you go for late planting so the attack will be for second order already i mentioned in the slide you can see uh, yeah, may june you have to plant and similarly second crop you have to go for november december so after the month of july from the month of july august september october are the peak season of their attack so what happen this fly will lay the eggs in the nursery we don't know after transplanting after 15 days only you can see the emergence of the silver shoot so what happens when you see the silver shoot uh, there is no use of applying any insecticides because what happen when you visualizing the silver shoot the fly is in the adult stage they will make a hole and escape from the plant system so what we recommending the farmers only you can go for drenching particularly when you are going for the july transplanting or august september transplanting you can go for drenching you can just like what you do in the soda manas you stagnate the water drench it with chloripyrifos uh, at the date of 0.2% uh, keep the seeds emerge the roots emerge in water for 12 hours a previous day you have to uh, put the plant after uh, uprooting and you have to keep it and it dry and uh, and we have found out uh, we have different what you see in bph we they also have biotypes nearly our acre program they identified six biotypes of the galmich and the biotypes for number 5 is present in our kerala condition i think in tamil and tamil nadu on paddy precision they are working on the similar similar experiments and they say it's maybe four or six i think so but i am not sure uh, but in our case it's five and we have found out that it's a varangal variety called w1263 from our acre program we have found out it is very very res moderately resistant we cannot say it's also complete resistant it's moderately resistant having a gene called gm1 gene this is the gene showing promising against the biotype number 5 so in that we have found out that biotype number 5 uh, the gm1 which is carrying the gene was found out. but our kerala variations are nothing are resistant to this biotype okay then uh, light trap which is actually it's easily attracted to light trap and uh, recent finding from our acre program we have found out you have to drench the uh, nursery that is 15 days before pulling with fipronil insecticide available in the name of region you can go for 20 250 grams for tens of tens uh, of nursery and uh, go followed by the main field application of either chloranthranipol it is spectra at the rate of 4 kg per acre or cart up hydrochloride in the main field after 20 to 25 days after transplanting it's giving a almost a very good control we cannot say 100% for any of the chemical control we cannot go for 100% you know about the insects hardly 70 to 80% control you can achieve by this application nursery you have to do one application because they lay the eggs in the nursery so when you getting transplanted the maggot will be present in the seed leaves we don't know so you can control the nursery in the seedling and the main field the late uh, uh, infection can be reduced by the application of the main field application so this is a very severe pest in our season and we call in a patambi avasis an endemic area for galmich 
in the uh, hotspot area they uh, identify in that they followed our patambi's hotspot location for galmit because almost all the plants you see you can see with the silver shoots you cannot find out any plant without a silver shoot when you come in the month of july august which is late transplanted normally okay next next slide so this is another uh, different place called world maggot it's called hydrilla filipina actually this is the pest of both the crop season but when you do a anywhere during any season you may make a transplanting you can see the attack of this fly actually this is the love our house fly like fly so they uh, maggot will infest mainly the emerging leaf of the plant so you can see the lower slide you can see a notch so this is the damage caused by the leaf by the only in seen in the emerging leaf not in the all the leaves only in the emerging leaf you can see but sometimes in palakkad some areas are severely attacked by world maggot so at that time what you will observe that there will be stunting of the plant growth and you can see the leaves and all yellowing and you can see the marginal blotching of the uh, deep drain pest actually that is world maggot actually for that uh, we recommend the same neem formulation and go the etl is still higher because this infest the infestation of uh, world maggot doesn't affect the yield of a crop but all the pest affect the yield of the economic yield of the crop but the world maggot damage is not doesn't so we the yield level is still higher and if you see the normal spray what you make for management of leaf folder or something spray formulation will control the world maggot for example you can go for chloranthranepol application corrosion 3 ml in 10 liters of water or flu bentamide 480 sc fame 1.5 ml 10 liters or you can go for same flu bentamide 20% wg takumi 2.5 gram in 10 liters so you can go for uh, indoxacar bar spinos and anything you can go it will control the any contact insect insecticides will do the uh, control the world maggot next slide please so this is the serious pest now in kerala we are facing like anything this we can say but uh, still uh, work is very very low in this particular pest it's called rice case worm it's actually its name is paraponix tagnalis and one more species is available that's called paraponix flucatalis okay when you see the stagnalis you can see the black and red spot on the it's a small wing uh, at lepidoptera even compared to leaf folder it's a very small moth and uh, this is how you can see the striped uh, on the you can see the lower one it's have just have stripes but these have a black uh, brown and red spots on the abdomen so this fly is a very very serious pest in our in our condition because our field are mostly inundated inundated with water you know we have a very good rainfall so this pest needs water like a fish fish is having gills outside but in this particular larva of this insect have the abdominal gills so they takes the oxygen from the dissolved water they cannot take the oxygen from what other insect do from the air it cannot do it takes only from the water so for their living it the water is very very uh, essential for their uh survival larval survival so uh, what it does actually means uh, it attacks the nursery as well as the main field similarly like blue beetle it attacks only the early transplanted crop of the leaf the mandibles are very very soft for this well, uh, caterpillar so that it will feed only on the early stage of the leaves the early stage plant leaf and all very very soft and uh, this one to feed on the leaf but in the as the leaf become harder they cannot the mandible is not strong enough to feed on the leaves so it is seen only in the early stage so what the first thing you have to do is the water logging you should avoid water logging means actually this insect what it does means is cut the leaf and make a case around the body and if in the immediately after the emergence the case will be this much as the larval grows the cases also will be uh, bigger in size so with the cases even in the cases when you open the leaf case you can see the larva with water without water they cannot able to survive so what you have to do you have to what you are recommending is uh, you have to reduce the water before reducing the water uh, actually this larva have you seen the i think you can go to the next slide please so this is the larva you can see this is the larva it will be seen inside the case and this is the pupa and you can see this is the severe damaged hills you can see it will completely remove the leaves uh, chlorophyll matter like a paper it makes a leaf like a paper like structure so sometimes the farmer supposed to do do trans uh, re, replanting after that attack of this particular insect so what you have to do previous slide please previous so you have to pass a rope so the, the, the cases will be hanging they will be uh, feeding in the water and they climb up and they found hanging on the loosely hanging on the leaves so what you have to do you can pass a rope or dip in the kerosene to dislodge the cases you have to 
by passing the rope the case will fall to the water then you have to open you have to raise the water level and open the uh, opening of the drain you have to drain the water so when the water comes very forcefully the case also will come along with the water you can take take a cloth or as a nets to collect the larvae uh, which is coming through the water and put it in a place where there is no water so when you put them without the water it will cannot able to survive because it's need the water when the water also dries from inside the case they will die so drain the water and another thing you have found out that uh, application of not you should not we are not recommending the farmers to go for any chemicals any chemicals doesn't have any effect on the case form because they have the water as the barrier to uh, to toxicate the larva so they have the water even in the cases so what do you do is you uh, go for application of kerosene or uh, engine oil engine oil is nothing but when you uh, go have a two or two two wheelers when you go for a service you have to suppose change oil so that waste oil you can use for the management of this case form normally we recommend 1 liter of the kerosene oil or engine oil mixed with 25 kg of sawdust even you can go for sand you after draining the field we can see the water logging wherever you seen in the field you apply this mixture only in the stagnated water so where they can survive so you have to apply their places and you have to keep the field water free for at least for 3 days that is the best method for controlling this case work but in the case of first season we have a weed downpour so what you have to do you have to just open the drain that's all no need you cannot able to control the water because the, the showers will be very high downpour will be a in our uh, state of kerala so the water will be running so they cannot able to stay in a particular field like that you can do even we have followed one more method that is instead of in the nursery when it comes even you can go for just uh, main field you cannot do but in the nursery you can do just you uh, destroy the cases by the hand they fall to the water then you can toxicate the stagnated with insecticides normally we recommend uh, lambda cyclothrin you, you know pyrethroids are having a knockdown effect you can go for lambda cyclothrin or cypermethrin 1 ml per liter you can mix and after uh, dislodging the cases you you drain the water make the water to a minimum level and drench the uh, stagnated water with insecticide so the larva will be get killed so this is the way we are managing this case form it is a very serious pest in both uh, first and crop season particularly early transplantees as well as in nursery so sometime we don't have sometime the farmers doesn't have a hill for transplanting the half of the field will not be partially transplanted so such a severe pest is the case form so in that case form we made some uh, next slide you can go for next slide actually we did some uh, work on case form actually you can see this is the first report in india that's called paraponix uh, um, that is called tetrastichus paraponixi so i we, we myself and uh, one one sri santosh from calicut university we identified this particular parasitoid it's a new report in the uh, india not only in the throughout the world it's a new report actually so this is a different uh, uh, morphological fo photo yes taken this is the uh, the new record and one more we identified is epilopsis scotinus this is also a eucnomonid it is also found attacking the case worm they actually if you see how the parasites we do it's very it's actually the particular parasitoid they enter the case and uh, keep the egg on the uh, pupa or the larva they parasitize and you can when you put the case in the tube you can get the flies parasitoids you can get and we uh, with the help of iict we have identified three compounds we have identified uh, that is called uh, x13 octodecenal at 11x this z11 and uh, uh, z9 hexadecenal is a common uh, pheromone compound in all lepidoptera if you see this z11 you can see in case of stem borer and uh, stem borer it is z11 hexadecenal h8 and uh, uh, z9 hexadecenal uh, decenal x11 hexadecenal and x z9 hexadecenal is a you know you know about studying about pheromone sightings so no you have studied pheromones in that you know have you studied the compounds chemical compounds so if we see this uh, last two that is let's have a decenal x decenal is the commonest pheromone compound present in almost all lepidoptera insects but this uh, in case of rice it is in the ratio of 3 is to 1 when you go to helicobacter parmigera it is 97 is to 3 so the same chemical uh, very uh, even in the case of we have found out these two compounds x11 uh, decenal x9 decenal and addition to that we have found two more compound that is x13 octodecenal x8 and then x11 hexadecenal uh, acetate we have found out with the help of iact hyderabad they have center of human chemicals we have three year collaborative project we had so in that we identified from the pheromone gans of the case
Okay, next slide, please. So this is your thing. Your stem borer is a major species in our place. But besides stem borer, we have two more species that is called white stem borer. That is Cryptophaga innotata. That is present in even the sugar cane. And one more stem borer we have is this Sesame inference. Both are present in the uh, in the stem borer. And you know stem borer, the damages of the, all the species will be the same. One is a dead heart, and uh, the reproductive stage is comes as a white hair. And uh, it is attack severe stem borer attack is seen mainly in the rabi. That is the second crop season. We have a severe attack of uh, stem borer, and you know the ED level and all. So clipping is the one the best method to control them culturally to prevent the egging of the female moths. And we have six pheromone traps. We have uh, actually in one pheromones also you know you can know about three types of uh, method you can do. One is monitoring. Then uh, mass uh, trapping, then mating destruction. I think you must be knowing. So when you want to find out the presence of a moth in that area, you can go for tree traps. After the presence is confirmed, you can go increase the trap to eight. When the population is becoming higher, you can go for ma 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 mating destruction. You can go. So we have the trigram of Japan. I am recommending uh, that of two CC. And we also from the Acri program, we have found out one method called the trap. That is the uh, trap crop. That is the Pusa basmati is one of the varieties mostly preferred by the low stem borer. So this you can raise the seedlings 15 days ahead of the normal varieties. For example, now we are going for a variety maybe you are CS that is CR 2000 that is a pon money or some variety. When you raise a nursery before the 15 days before you raise the Pusa basmati you raise and for every uh, 12 rows you can go for Pusa basmati which is a 15 days older than the normal variety. So this comes to the flowering fast uh, earlier than compared to the normal variety. What you do because it's to, uh, 15 days earlier than the uh, first crop, this crop, and it will flower, and the female will start to lay only on the pusa basmati. So by that you can reduce the attack of the uh, our our crop. Okay, this is one of the trap crop we have found out from the rakri program. We have found out like that. Next please. And uh, normally before before. And for uh, to my knowledge, what I feel that for both the stem borers or for the garment, they are called tiller pest. Tiller pest means what? They will be seen inside the stem. The adult will lay the eggs. The larva or maggot in the case of garment, they enter into the stem and they will be seen on the inside the stem, uh, just above the root level. The stem, the insect will be seen. So normal spray formation doesn't have any effect on the. Uh, larvae of the either garment or the stem borer. So granular formulations are found to be the best one for controlling this kind of pest. So what you found out the carta pyrochloride at that of five kg per acre. You can go the first application to prevent the dead heart. You can go for uh, nursery itself application five days before pulling. You can go for two two fifty grams per ten cents of nursery, or in the main field at ten to fifteen days after transplanting to prevent the dead heart. And for preventing the wire, you have to go for the booting stage. Have you know heard about booting stage in rice? This is the stage where you can see the rice. The under surface will be somewhat swollen. When they are about to grain supposed to come, it will be swollen. The bow, the bottom of the stem is somewhat swollen. And after that, only the panicle will be coming out. That is called booting. This is the best stage for applying the last dose of fertilizers as well as the insecticide for management for the white ears. But to apply this uh, booting stage is the Uh, you can apply these granules. One is the uh, for preventing the dead dart early application at 15 to 20. Then another the another the booting. Similarly, the fipronil is also effective. Uh, three that is for it's actually it's, it's not in six kg, it's four kg, six kg per acre. Region six kg per acre and chloranthranipol fetra is four kg per acre and carbosulfan also four kg per acre. This you make a just a correction for fipronil is six kg per acre, not not four kg per acre. Next slide. So this is the you can see this is the dead dart and white dart. This is the pink stem borer larvae. It is very very big, and you can see this is the moth. Actually, we see uh, you can identify the damage by uh, nature of damage. You can identify which species you can identify. For example, in a hill, you know about rice. When you transplant one seedling, it produces numerous stillers, and the entire thing is called as a hill. You understood? So suppose the hill is having some more, some more, some somewhere around maybe 15 uh, tillers and with having all the 15 white uh, hair heads means if you see one or two or two to three four uh, two or three hair heads will be present when the damage is due to yellow or white because this uh, particular larva uh, yellow or white when enters the stem they complete the life cycle within the stem they won't come out after that. The entire life will be they become a larva and they become a pupa and the adult will emerging 
they have a single host single plant they feed but in the case of pink stem borer it's not a single plant it will be feeding on multiple plants so when you see a white hill with multiple white ears maybe say maybe in so among the 10 tillers you have mainly 8 to 6 to 7 are white heads means you can surely say it's a pink stem borer because this insect the larva it the last the larval stage is more than the white or pink it may be a larval stage may be some around 40 days so they move out from the larvae what you see in the case of brinjal lucinodus they come out from the fruit and enter the adjacent fruit similarly this particular larva will move from the feed after feeding it comes and enter the other stem another thing another thing you can also identify by uprooting the dead, dead hearts when you uproot the dead heart when you see dead heart means the entire portion will be dead you know the emerging tip will be dead when you uproot the, it will come out easily but you cannot see a larva for yellow and white because they are seen at the base of the stem but if you say that if it's a pink means when you uproot you can see larva on the uh, uprooted dead heart you can see if it's very small you can see multiple larva even you can see about 10 to 15 even 20 to 25 larva small small larva you can see that is you clearly can surely say it's a pink stem borer it is seen mostly on the aerial parts but in the case of other larvas, white or yellow, they are present on the base of the stem, near the ground region. Okay, This is the difference you can make by this. And in that, we have identified that yellow, we mostly it is sleeve traps. Uh, compared to sleeve, delta sticky traps are better than the sleeve traps. Because in delta, delta sticky uh, delta, you know delta means, you know, you know, no? delta means this is delta. Sleeve trap means it have a sleeve. So in that what happened when the uh, larva of uh, moth were collected, they fall, they have a chance of escaping. But in the case of delta trap, due to the sticky liner, all trapped adults are completely stick on the sticky surface. And you have found out that is the most best. And you can see this is the NBR, you know about in Bangalore it is there. They have developed a uh, nano lure. It's very, very effective. I can see how many mass you can see in this uh, adult moth you can see in the uh, Nearly maybe some 50, 60. So this is the condition you should get uh, pheromone trap means. Now a lot of co uh, under quality la pheromones are available. They are not that much effective compared to this uh, NBR. That is they are doing very good pheromone. We heard about Dr. Subaharan. He is the person who already developed the analogue for rhinoceros beetle. And similarly he has developed one uh, for yellow stem borer. He has developed an analogue. It is very effective. And, uh, and you can see these are the uh, two species which is not uh, seen in our not we cannot able to multiply but they are seen in plenty that is one parasite called trichloroplasis aploctina this is the one uh, parasite and another is the tetrastichus kinobi you can see uh, this is tetrastichus kinobi and that is trichloroplasis aploctina so this particularly this is the major nearly 80 when you uh, during the second crop there is say, say, say 10, 10 or 50 to 50 or 100 eggmas if you collect Nearly 50 to 60 egg mass will be parasitized naturally by these two parasites. We are, we, are not, we are not successful in culturing that, but they are present naturally. So, if you see, uh, they are see this one emerging from the egg. You can see that is the shinobi, how they parasitize and come. And you can see that one is the uh, Staphylococcus aplactana. So, these are the two major species we find naturally in our condition. So, uh, if you see uh, the stem borer egg mass, that much the egg, but uh, that much larva is not uh, able, to, able to infest the rice because due to the presence of these two parasites, they are very, very, very successful. But we are not successful because they are host specific. They, um, if you see trichroma species and all, they can parasite the eggs of the Corsera. But this particular species need the yellow stem borer alone for their uh, parasitization. So we have found out these are very, very, very good parasites, very good. Naturally, it comes in the second crop season at the time of attack of yellow stem borer. Next. So this is the normal of what we are getting. The yellow, yellow, uh, light trap is the one very, very best for controlling the stem borer. So when the, uh, the infestation, if you start seeing the field, when you install a light trap, you can get multiple number nearly per day. You can even up to get 800, 300, 400, 600 moths you will get. So what happens before it going to the field, we are killing them along with the egg. That is the one advantage you have a light trap. If you kill them, so you can reduce maximum adult moths uh, going to the field for laying eggs. So this is the one of the best light trap is the best. And similarly, you have the uh, trigroma japonicum. It's also uh, very effective. 
and uh, it is having a long orifice that's why you can able to lay the mass of eggs if you just remember eggs and all the eggs are laid in masses and covered by a tuft of hairs so this tuft of hairs can be penetrated only by the japonicum not by the chelonis they have a very long ovipost so this is very very uh, very going actually we are recommending the farmers from the nursery itself a week after transplanting itself you have to take, keep the uh, egg card and we are recommending that there are 2 cc per acre or 5 cc per hectare you can continue for 6 uh, weeks uh, you can go for alternating every week you have to keep for 6 release you have to uh, release at weekly intervals next slide so this is the another problem we have the rice leaf folder when you see leaf folder uh we normally you see the, this is the nephelochloris minimalis when she was taking i was telling about this we have the another species called i think the photo is not very clear uh, marasmia you can see the difference in the wavy markings see this one actually if you see the uh, wavy marking from the both adjacent wings will be joining in case of nephelochloris but another species what you see they'll be joining but the first line will be joining but other two lines may not be joined it will be half of way by that you can another thing the spread of the wing span how it is sitting you can see in case of uh, cleflochloris it comes like a v shape but this is well spread by that you can identify which species you can identify okay that's why what she was when you was telling the pheromones are not successful when she was telling because uh, when she installed the place it may be some may, may not be alone the species what she meant the pheromone may be for antony it may be other species may be present in that area so you don't get any catches the similar thing what happens in the rice leaf fold actually in our acre program they they are uh, produced the loops and they sent to us when we install we don't get light uh, mothers because the species the uh, nephelochloris may not be the major species in the area it the may be the marasmia is maybe a higher side so it's not come to the trap in punjab ludhiana they are keeping they are getting good catches because there is only the nephelochloris uh, midinalis is present but in our conditions there are they, they mix it up two or three species if it occurs the catches may not be the efficient one which because you are keeping the pheromone for a particular species not the other species that the issue you will face and uh, similarly it is a problem in both first and second crop and uh, two damage leaves is the etl and a card already you know kilonis is the best effective kilonis can be used in any cropping system also not only in rice even in the course of bindi lucinodas you can you can go for areas for any species you can use For, but in the case of rice, we are recommending only six releases. But you go for vegetable, you can go for even eight to nine, even nine to ten releases can go. It will be very very efficient. But to you have to start the installation from the egg of the flowering of the vegetables because they are here they passes only the egg stage of the insect. So the stage specific is more important. So so you have to keep them when the adult must start laying eggs. You have to keep the egg card. Then only the system will be useful. And we also found out basal sturgences. Uh, delphin formulation is very good for that uh, leaf folder and being a contact person what you i mentioned about jaggery why you adding jaggery because palatability increase the palatability suppose if you spray because all the bt and all they are contact person the larva are supposed to feed you know how the mode of action you many people must be knowing the acidic ours and all acidic and the larva is alkaline in this condition the bacteria become active so uh, just by spraying the bacteria they consume the process is 3 days and it is killed by the disease conditions we know about septicemia and if you see these are the insecticides already neem you can go and insecticides you can have the uh, normal chloranthranipol corrosion uh, 3 ml in 10 liters of water then flu bendamide two formulations everything is good but the one thing in the case of leaf fold in the pop uh, damage becomes severe because all the all the insecticides recommended are mainly contacts as well as stomach they are not systemic okay flu bendamide or any molecule we are recommending for leaf folder they are only uh, contact or stomach but that's why in farmers point of view when they spray the chemical at the time of heavy infestation they don't get desirable results okay because the larva will be seen inside the food because they fold the leaf and the larva will be completely inside the food so what you recommend is you have to pass thorn or bush to unfold the fold leaves then you spray the chemical the results will be very good okay so next so this is the feeding of larva you can see this is a severe field affected leaf folder and this is the, our iar they developed a pheromone you can see the attack of the, this is the nephelochloris species so you can see many cats are there of nephelochloris and this is the uh, kilonis uh, blue card we are using for management of uh, leaf folder next 
and this is the common natural element is present in our ecosystem one is cutisia uh, then temuloka then cinobracon and in particular the predator ophionia ground beetle it's a very efficient predator of leaf folder they go and inside the uh, food and ca- catch the larva and they bring out and feed on it feed on it and st- that is uh, this is called uh, um, um, uh, it's a pupil pa- parasite xanthopimpla what you see at the last one next and compared to the bph this is a very 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 severe in our place normally if you see bph and all normally if you see in our i don't know about in our tamil nadu the i have experienced that the attack will be seen only in the vegetative phase but in the kerala the condition is entirely different mainly in the chittur that is adjacent to coimbatore we have the chittur area of palaka district they are mostly affected by bph in the month of august september that to the seed the plants are about to ripe the grains have emerged and the grains are about to mature it will come and attack and the complete loss this is the field attacked by bph in a farmers field in palakkad you can see you can see how much the area nearly 1 acre will be lost 2 acres 3 acres mostly in the month of september that to in our place is not a problem but in the farmers field it's a serious problem of uh, this one and uh, what the thing is what you have to avoid close spacing you know about alleyways for every some 3 meter 4 meter you have to give a wide space in our Pat- patambi station we didn't have any serious outbreak of bbh because we are adopting a pad row system pad row system means for every two rows there will be a another two rows so between two rows uh, two uh, there would, i can show in next slide i can show you that uh, planting system uh, two rows means it will be around 7 cm for another two rows it will be another 7 cm the space between the either two rows will be 1 meter Or not one meter, one thirty thirty centimeter, one feet. So in that case, you can see this is the method what we adopt here in our uh, station. So in that condition, if there is more space and airy, the BPH will be there, but they never multiply. So the sunlight and the air system will be going means if the population will be present, we are getting them in the light up, but they never multiply. But in the farmers' point of view, what they do is they go for either higher seed rate and palaka. Now mainly they are going for mechanical transplantation. You know, no more labor starts scarce, so they all are going for machine transplanting. In the machine transplanting, what the machine transplant means, it is planting a hill. About Namakaraya, I think uh, when you plant a seedling, there will be two to three seedlings we recommend per hill. When you plant a seedling, two to three seedlings you have to keep on the per uh, hill. But the machine will plant nearly twenty to twenty-five seedlings in the hill. So what happen? This entire plant will grow. When they all will grow, means they completely cover the spaces between the plant system, and there will be movement. There is no sunlight or air within the uh, microclimate of the crop. So what happened? The population BPH will multiply very fast, and you can see PDB 33. You must be knowing it's our variety, which is showing a successful. Uh, even now, the researchers not able to identify the not only gene is involved, but some other factors is also associated with PDB 33. It's a universal donor for even for all international varieties. In Iri, they are keeping our germ plasm as the universal chick. You can see if you do any BPH screening, you have to use PDB 33 as a universal chick. So still it is proving, still it is showing resistant to B P D B thirty three. Is uh, showing resistant. I can show in the next slide how it looks. And you should not go for resistance causing pyrethroids. Pyrethroids should not spray when you absorb a B P H population. And normally systemics are mostly effective. As a taff, two fifty grams per acre. You can go for imidacloprid, confidar, fifty ml per acre. Or thiamethoxam actra, then etofenprox, then trisflow misoperam. What are stealing? It's a new insecticide. 0.48 pyrometers in these are very good molecules but you should not rotate them with the same chemical for if the population is when the outbreak is observed hopper bird is observed this drying is called hopper bird when it's observed the population may not be seen in the dried plants it will be in the adjacent you can see all many will be in millions insect will be seen on the nymphs and adults will be seen on the adjacent uh, green portion of the limb Uh, rice plants so what you have to spray when you spray insecticide normally we have found out you should not go for hand spray what we call that uh, hand spray is the uh, low volume spray uh, sorry high volume spray you can go should go for bph and merge for rice bug which are migratory you can go for low volume spray low volume means normally use the power sprays you know that you just pull and have you seen the power spray You have to rotate the. This one it will runs on a petrol engine, and it have a four, three stroke engine like our bike. It will have. You have to put and it will start, and the spray formulation will be very very 
it goes to very long surface and normally we recommend for a um, high volume normally recommend is 200 uh, liter per acre and the uh, factory is 500 liter but in case of this uh, low volume that is uh, uh, sprayer you have to go for only 60 liters or 70 liters per acre because they go very fast and you have to run for run you have to run and the chemical dosage also vary from these two sprays okay normally what i mentioned is 2 ml 1 ml i am mentioning this is whole good only for high volume sprayer but you go for low volume so it will be the double the dosage because the chemical what i recommend for acre actor will they remains the same but the in the, you have to instead of spraying for 200 liters you have to spray within 60 liters for that you have to double the dosage normally 2 ml means it will be 4 or 5 ml for example i was telling about actra actra 2 g for 10 liters but in the case of power you have to go for 4 to 5 grams per tank that should me should know everybody should know that so what to do you have to go with the power spray what is use of this power means they go at a very high speed high intensity they go suppose the bph normally you know you must be knowing the activity of bph how they will they'll be moving sidewards if which a stem means when you spray with the hand sprayer it will be very very force will be very, very less so they move like this when you spray so the insect may not be knocked down by the insecticides when you go for power means due to the force it will completely cover the uh, insects that's the one advantage of the power sprays next so this is the one what i am telling this is a method you can go for uh, preventing the outbreak of the bph and this is the one of the new technology we have identified not only in acre program is called ecological engineering what is ecological engineering you are going for flower crops in the buns for example this is to invite the parasites and predator to the uh, ecosystem so what they do for example uh, ladybird beetles they mainly feed on cowpea you can go for cowpea or marigold even vegetables like bindi anything you can go on the buns this will uh, favor the multiplication of this particular natural enemies and they feed on the bph along the glh population in the nymphs and agadals they will feed that's the one advantage and you can see this is our ptp 33 this you can see all the pressure one this is our normal variety it is completely dried by hopper bond can see ptp 33 is not at all dried due to the uh, bph any for all biotypes it is resistant ptp 33 and similarly you can see the preferential for this is our uh, we have the chemical ecology lab in our patambi we have i will show at the last about the facilities we have one is a multi arm alpha meter we have wifi automatic we have gc eag we have so in that we have found out that bendy you can see these are bendy you can see lot of coxin by running that we have found out it have more preference to bendy coxin and similarly cowpea you can see the beetles are sitting in the arm of the bendy and similarly a copy and you can see that's one that is a in sasamia that is the gingeri the uh, third sasamia uh, sasamum okay you can see the gingeri flower so you can see ophiona is going and sitting in the arm so they can uh, they are they are preferring the flowering crop so that's why the ecological you can see this is the uh, sasamum in the buns by growing them you can attract the natural enemies and you can harbor the natural enemies which will be controlling the sucking place in the field that's the one advantage you have the by using this term ecological engineering no no farmers are now growing mostly they are go marigold rather than other crops but in, compared to marigold other crops are more favored by the natural enemies for example cowpea bendy then sasamum is more preferred by the this one so you can these are the natural enemies bph you know about the rice bug when you see there see attack of rice bug you can see the presence of green bug they are very efficient predator they feed on the eggs and the nymphs of the bph you can see the ladybird beetles and you can see the redwood spider like cosa sudanaleta and you have the row beetle uh, petrus vicipers you have and similarly water spiders and oxyopus they all feed on the uh, hoppers when they come to the top and all even they feed on the this particular web spinners by spider even they found found to feed on even the adult moths of all the pests uh, yellow stem borer moth and leaf holder moth they will feed okay next and uh, i think i am nearing completion of my presentation and this is the last uh, rice bug now uh, when i was interacting with i was telling rice bugs comes only in the milky stage of the rice so uh, normally we found out that uh, leptoris uh, leptogoris oratoris is the common species we present in our system and uh, one more we are recently identified that the like uh, that is leptogoris pseudonalata it will be very smaller than the uh, normal bug 
but they are uh, good flyers and they are uh, very very good and normally etl we recommend two bucks and uh, removing the, actually for controlling the uh, i was telling it will be adult hibernation is commonly seen in rice bug they mostly see you know rice and all it comes in the same family of the grass gramineous same family so all the weeds which is present in the family of grass they produces the panicles these adult bugs will be feeding in the lean season on the panicles of the weeds so what you have to do first thing you have to completely remove the any uncropped vegetations or uh, grown or the bunch you have to keep it always uh, trim and keep free itself you can nearly control the adult bug coming to our field um, nearly 50 to 60 percent population can control because you know you are studied about key pest now key pest endemic you would have studied in msc what is key pest what is endemic and what is epidemic what is sporadic what is epidemic anyone ha huh? ha huh? ah uh, okay what is endemic they are present along with the system and what is sporadic what is sporadic rarely comes when it comes it will reduce it will affect the yield that's the thing so rice bugs comes under the sporadic pest it comes rarely the occurrence is not sure sometimes they comes in many number and reduce uh, completely affect the and they completely desub the milky grain and um, the grains become chaffy so it is rarely seen this season you seen but next season you may not be seeing the pest so that's the thing so normally we recommend is the malathion malathion is a pest which uh, insects are very effective but the thing is that the population is very low you are watch i telling here you should go for low volume spray power spray you have to go that's a very good for rice bug because they are highly migratory they will be moving in and around so whenever you spray the spraying technique is very important for uh, the rice bug even for uh, B- bph for bph when you spray you have to spray from the green portion to the dry portion understood then only can because the bph once the uh, completely uh, hopper bone is absorbed they will be seen only in the uh, uh, thriving population that is which is green so you have to go from the green to when you spray insecticide you can cover the green portion and then you have to come to the dried portion understood but but in the case of uh, rice bug you have to make a circle you have to start from the end this is a plot you just imagine you have to start from the corner you have to come round 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 but this is what you are doing why you are doing like that means when you spray they move inward so by circling you can grow you can concentrate the pest to the center and knock down this is the way how you have to control the rice bug and normally when the population is very high you can go for mixing with pyrethroids you can go for cypermethrin or lambda psilothrin any insecticide 1 ml with 2 ml malathion can spray and it's very good okay have you for your for are you following what i told you have to make a circle spray you have to bring the population to the center of the field and get it knocked out okay so this is one of the pest which is now becoming serious in our place that is Podoptera morushiana. Actually, this comes mostly in the coal lands. In our Trishur, we have coal lands. Have you heard about coal lands? What is coal lands? Have you heard about the term coal lands? Anybody through literature? Coal lands is the one where it is below the mean sea level. Mostly, they come back to the normal rice cultivation. It will be below the mean level. It is farmers harvest only one crop. Other periods, it will be completely flooded. it will be a flooded completely for example when the rain comes the month of june july it will be completely flooded and the water will be running this much water will be lying like a river like a river it will be running and after the receding the water in the month of august september they take a crop so what happens in this coal lands it will be highly nutritious compared to the because the water stagnating will be there so all the organic uh, settlements will be there in the field so they will take only one crop so in that crop the full area will be ent- entire area which is uh, completely flooded will be covered with rice that's called coal lands so in that even the normal variety which is yielding about say 2.2 to 2.5 tons per acre will be held, uh, yielding about 3.5 to 4 tons per acre farmers are harvesting uh, nearly uh, five nearly 4 to 5 tons per acre they are harvesting in this coal lands so in that coal lands it's a serious problem because they do in the latest stage of the crop only one crop so do, this is a nursery you can see this is a nursery which is completely cut by the larva you can see the only the stumps of the nursery seedlings so you can see this is the quantity of uh, larva what you have seen is the larva this is patalapulu in kerala they call patalapulu 
okay so in that what you first you have to do is first thing when you see a swarming caterpillar first you want to do you have to flood that area when you flood means what happen the larva which is hiding in the cracks and surface normally they are nocturnal they are not seen in the morning hours they will be just uh, hidden in the cracks and surfaces so when you see, when you see it's like it's grazed by cattle right it like a or maad menjittu pona mari irukku sollanga la adha mari completely will be killing the entire will be but you cannot see the larva what happened is similar like red hairy caterpillar in groundnut they will be inside the cracks and surfaces so what happened first thing you flood the area what happened when you flood means the cracks will be covered by water the larva will come up then that you can introduce the problem then you can go for any uh, malathion or phasalon even parthrods will be very good because this much population you have you better go for parthrods maybe lambda cyclothrin maybe cypermethrin you can go one number per letter you can go for any sprays to knock down and kill the larva okay next slide so these are the some of the minor pests besides what i am telling about all major pests we have the some of the minor pests what you observe in our places the Uh, leaf hoppers this is virusans that is uh, this is the uh, nigropictus and this is virusans you know, i think i didn't uh, wrongly mention as virusans nigropictus that striped one this is virusans you know in our uh, tamil nadu we have the tungura virus tungura virus is spread by virusans and similarly this is a green one pa- parvus we have then rice horned caterpillar this are minor pests and you have the yellow hairy caterpillar the adult stage is there next slide then you have the skipper skipper butterfly and we have these grasshoppers they feed like that and only the wings will be seen by feeding itself you can identify it's a grasshopper can you say which insect side will good for uh, hoppers in the grasshopper if you see in a field what we can spray but in palakkad we sometimes we have a severe instance of grasshoppers they completely feed the leaf only the, the panicle will be there there won't be any leaves when you see you can see you enter the field the grasshopper will be flying here and there what you can go if you see such a condition Yeah, any clue? Idea? MSc, PhD are there? No, any idea? Chlorpyrifos. Chlorpyrifos is an excellent molecule for uh, grasshoppers. Uh, we have uh, gra- chlorpyrifos. This chemical, this particular chemical controls many insects. For example, you can go for cracks, uh, crabs. Crabs are very serious in our place. You know, it's no, 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 it's no, it's no, it's uncommon. Only when I join the service in KU, it's a serious problem. what they will do means immediately after transplanting the crabs the younger ones will cut the seedlings and they go and hide in the burrows the moni can see the leaves will be floating completely you cannot see crabs so if you see the side you can see the burrows so what is the best thing you have to be done we found out that you drain the water and make it water free then spray the chlorpyrifos on the adjacent side of the bunch of the four corners you don't get then cut the crabs at all so very good molecule for termites it's a good molecule and for uh, white grubs what you see in the soils it's very good molecule and even for g- grasshopper is a good molecule so this is the facilities that are to making what we have we have the eag we have wind tunnel air entertainment we have spme spme you must be knowing what is spme huh? this is actually is used for observe, uh, that is uh, to uh, observe the uh, uh, chemical that is chemical the odorant from the air maybe the flower some odorant will be chemical will be there instead of keeping poro pack i think anybody worked on chemical ecology here poro pack instead of keeping poro pack you have the fibers when you dip the fibers this will observe instead of poro pack then we have white tube and multi next so this is the procedure of eag how you know how to do go operate eag you know if we have gc eag means we have the two advantage EAG give only the spike of the antenna, but EAG will that is GC will give the any compound will be present. So when the both the peaks are coincident, means you can identify this is the compound present in the particular uh, solution. What you can identify? I think you are having anything. I think next next. This is the wind tunnel we have. Next, this is the air entertainment method. Air entertainment method. So you have to. Uh, why, why this why fact why see if suppose you have find a pheromone you have found out that compound is present so how you will and will uh, that you confirm that only by y tube alpha tameter you take the particular compound and keep one arm you can keep with the compound 
and another without a compound for example normally solvent used for uh, dissolving this chemical compounds is the uh, one is dcm dichloromethane and as the xc so you can take this uh, one is treated with a compound one without uh, dcm without compound you can keep you can see the biase this is called biase you can and if you can confirm your uh, study the pheromone is present okay. next so this is the uh, gcag mechanism so this is the uh peak of this is all eag and this is the gc so once it coincides you can identify the compound is present so thank you very much i think uh, it's so informative to you that's thing i need so thank you and uh, all the best you can welcome to our center so if you have any program to go outside you can visit our center I welcome you all to our center. If you have a chance to come to Kerala, it's our center is very near from your place. Hardly three, two and a half hours to three hours journey. Uh, it comes in the Guruvayur road. Our place is located in Mele Patambi, and uh, our uh, our entire station comes under 65 acres. Rice is there, 65 acres. It is we are having, and almost uh, uh, we are doing all the works. Uh, what you are. Okay, then thank you.